Okay, since we've talked a lot about the theories of management, kind of how we got to where we're at today, um, we're going to build off that and start with these five fundamentals of management, and starting with, you know, the most important fundamental, which is planning. Uh, planning, <coughs> planning is, uh, you know, the very first foundational functional step, we have to have a solid plan uh, and planning in place before we can move on to all the other steps. Um, you know, you have to have a plan before you can start organizing around it. Um, you have to have a plan before you can start staffing. You have to be organized before you can start staffing around that plan. And you have to um, have a plan to follow to be able to motivate others to follow that plan. And the last one, controlling, um, you know, kind of is similar to planning, um, but we want to make sure we have a solid plan in place so that we can set our processes up to follow that plan. So when you when you find yourself in healthcare, um, particularly, you know, you're going to be mired in day-to-day -day operations. You're going to be dealing with a lot of people, um, from patients to team members to employees to vendors to the community. Um, so you're going to be dealing with a lot of people day in and day out, um, and, and Unfortunately, you can get bogged down in that. So your job as an administrator, as, as someone working in that more supervisory managerial role, you have to kind of get to the 50,000 foot view and be able to do a little forward thinking and see what direction is the organization going and be able to do a little bit of that forward thinking. And that's what planning is all about. So everyone, regardless of what level you're at within an organization, is going to end up planning. Everyone has to plan no matter what level you're at. Um, even senior executives, and what we mean by that, um, these are your C, they're called the C-suites, um, but these are like your CEO, your COO, CFO, CNO, CIO, CXO, um, which is your chief executive officer, your chief operating officer, chief financial officer, um, your chief nursing officer, chief information officer. The CXO, your chief experience officer, is becoming a relatively new position that deals with patient experience, um, which we'll talk about later on through the course. Um, but these are a couple positions at that level of management with senior executives. So planning is going to be, uh, you know, important and very integral part of your day-to-day -day life um, in this more senior managerial role. You know, but why is it so important for you as a manager, you as a supervisor, to go and seek this advice out? And it all really goes back to the interdependency between the departments and those relationships that exist there. Um, so you want to set yourself up for a good plan. You want to pull as many people in to get different perspectives on how changes or how forecasting is going to affect different aspects of your facility. So a couple lectures ago, or a couple slides ago, I gave you an example of uh, how to set out uh, to, to make SMART objectives that, you know, that we just covered on the last slide, those specific, measurable, attainable, reliable, and timely objectives and goals. And this is just another example of how you can go about accomplishing that. So the strategic plan and the strategic planning process, um, if you end up taking, uh, we have a course all around strategic planning, which we get to a lot more detail regarding the strategic planning process. 
Um, but it goes a little bit further than your, you know, simple budget layout. Um, this has to be a really well-developed, really well-rounded plan. Um, and it goes in a lot more depth and covers a longer time frame um, than other kind of simpler plans or budgetary plans. And, you know, it needs to be overall very dynamic for this changing healthcare environment. You know, like we've said multiple times, and I'm sure we'll say multiple times throughout the rest of the semester, healthcare is rapidly changing um, very dynamic and we need to make sure our plans are set up in a way that adjusts easily to that ebb and flow and the changes that we see in healthcare overall. So moving into the um, environmental assessment, we have two common ways that we go about doing these environmental assessment techniques. The PESTHR analysis, the PESTER analysis, um, this is more broad. Uh, I think it's used a lot more in military. We don't really see this out in the healthcare industry that much. Um, but here we're looking at different political, economic factors, regulatory forces. What we do see here uh, in the healthcare field a lot is a SWOT analysis. So this environmental assessment, this SWOT analysis is going to be that critical component of your data supported strategic planning. And, and everything we do, everything we present needs to be able to be backed up by data. You need to be able to point to the data and, and have some evidence, some um, supporting evidence to show why you're considering the things that you are. Um, SWOT analysis where we're looking uh, internally at our own organizational strengths and weaknesses and externally at the opportunities and threats that exist out there. Um, this is great for a local market analysis. Um, and again, you know, we're out gathering data. We can plot that out, put that on a chart and kind of see trends over time um, internally as well as externally with some different benchmark indicators that we may be watching. Um, SWOT analysis is an important term to know. Make sure that you study that. So here we have a, an example. Um, I just wanted to show you, go over this, but uh, this is how you can start to conduct a SWOT analysis, uh, particularly around a market analysis uh, on the external side. So if you're working, let's say, in long-term care, um, you can look at other long-term care facilities, um, look at their case mix index, their reimbursement, their salaries, a, a lot of different aspects. You can look at hospitals, um, assisted living facilities, and this kind of gives you all the information in one place. Um, but this is a great way just to kind of organize all the information that you're going to be bringing in from your, from your SWOT and market analysis. So we talk about guiding principles. Um, you know, we've talked before, everything should relate back to your mission, vision, and values as an organization. Um, these are the core foundational values of why you exist and why you're here and why you're doing the things that you do. So we'll go over those in a little bit more detail. Your mission statement, uh, you know, it's often very, very short. Um, you know, you don't want a paragraph mission statement, but lays out what your organization does. So my former employer, um, their mission statement was bringing loving care to health care. Um, you know, it's your job as the administrator, as the supervisor, as the manager, to teach your employees about the mission statement and why it's important. You know, my, my one up, my superior, you know, made sure that we were all educated on exactly what that mission statement means and how we need to live up to that mission statement on a daily basis. When we come into work, how can I come into work today and make sure that I'm bringing loving care to health care, to my patients that I see on a daily basis? So teaching your employees the value of the mission statement and what it means. And, you know, if you, if you find yourself in an organization that you don't believe in the mission statement, don't work for the organization because the mission statement needs to be something that you wholeheartedly believe and that you can get behind and that you can support. Now when we move into the vision statement, these go hand in hand, uh, the mission statement and the vision statement. The vision statement is where we want to be in the future, so where do we see ourselves going down the line? 
And we end with the values. You know, these three are often, you know, we always see these together. That's why they're called the MVV, the mission, vision, and values. Um, our employees of an organization, you know, yourself included uh, in that supervisory role, should come in and live, you know, strive to live by these values every day that you're at work. These are the foundational core of what your organization is trying to live up to. So, you know, make sure to look for examples to live by the values out in your organization. Where do you see an employee, you know, really representing the values of their organization? And how can you recognize them for that? Um, and just make sure that you're communicating out to your staff the importance of these values and, you know, making sure that you are sticking to them. So we've talked about communication, empathetic listening, uh, but I wanted to bring this up one more time and just stress again that communication is everything. So everything you do, the success and failure of everything you do relies on communication. Um, you know, you'll often find, especially when you do the strategic planning piece, change is hard and you'll get some pushback. Um, whether you're doing strategic planning or you're making a small process change, change is very very hard and people are resistant to, resistant to change but if you can have your communication mechanism you know solidified and you can get the information out there change is easier when people understand why and if you don't have this communication method you know solid before you start going out to make some changes or start going out to do this strategic planning you're going to experience a lot of problems on the back end Guys, we're going to go ahead and end here with monitoring plan, uh, plan effectiveness. So please make sure to review over these slides and let me know if you have any questions.